guys, Dr. Ash here. We are going to talk about a, a very short topic today. It's actually going to be probably relatively quick, but placental abnormality. So this is kind of goes along with um, women's health, intrapartum, uh, but I didn't want to put it in the intrapartum video just because this is really before we get into labor. Most of these uh, conditions are diagnosed before labor and will actually impact how labor gets carried out. So uh, whether it's a normal birth versus an emergency cesarean section, et cetera. So placental abnormality, abnormalities. Let's start by uh, the ones that kind of puncture their way through the uterus, if you will. So we have placenta accreta. That is just where it is abnormally placed or adhered, attached to the, plac um, the placenta to the wall, the uterine wall. So this can be some sort of abnormality, not necessarily life-threatening, not necessarily major on the woman or the fetus. Next we have is placenta incretia, where the placenta actually partially penetrates in through the uterine muscle. And so this can potentially be dangerous, both for uh, the woman as well as the fetus. And it may end up in an emergency birth, just depends on how much of that uterine muscle is involved. And then the worst one on the list here is placenta percreta, which is where it goes all the way through the uterus. So it actually perforates through the placenta, I mean, through the uterus, and the placenta is just kind of hanging out outside of the uterus. So obviously a potential bad situation, and we're going to talk about that right now. So assessment findings, if it's a normal vaginal delivery, uh, there will be hemorrhage that is present immediately after birth. Uh, in the sense that um, because it is abnormally planted into the uterine wall or has gone through the muscle structure itself, there is going to be quite a bit of bleeding immediately after delivery. So one of the things that we have to look for, of course, is external signs of hemorrhage. But if this is perforated all the way through the uterine wall, there may, may be intra-abdominal hemorrhaging. And so we have to look for signs of shock as well, which would be severe tachycardia, severe hypotension, eventually loss of consciousness. Now, the other thing, too, is there may be a preparation for a hysterectomy. And so, unfortunately, once the uterus gets penetrated and it ruptures, there probably is no saving of the uterus, at least not for purposes of uh, future deliveries. So two more conditions really fast here. Let's talk about the two more common ones, which is placenta previa and placenta or abruption. I think technically it's abruptio placentae um, because some Latin or other person created the name of it. But anyways, placenta previa, this is where the placenta is actually implanted on the loader, lower uterine segment. And we have three different types. We can have a total or complete, partial or marginal. And basically the difference here is a total or complete, you guessed it, completely covers the cervical opening. So when the patient is fully dilated, it is just full on placenta. And that is all that's there. And so you can imagine once this woman is in labor, we cannot do vaginal exams, but we'll get there in just a minute. Partial is where the placental border is within three centimeters of that cervical opening. So it's pretty darn close, but it does not completely block the cervical opening. And so that one is going to be on a case by case basis, whether or not this can be a normal delivery. And then there's something called a marginal or low lying placenta. And that actually has to is greater than three centimeters from the os or the cervical opening, whichever term you want to use. And so therefore that one has a little less risk, but it's still kind of tricky being right down there by where the baby is supposed to exit. So we have to be very, very careful uh, with all of the previous, but the total and complete absolutely has to be a cesarean section. So previa assessment is going to be the exact opposite of abruption, which we're going to talk about here in just a minute. But previa is a sudden onset of painless, bright red vaginal bleeding, usually in the back half of the pregnancy. So as the fetus is getting bigger, the blood is going to be more apparent. Uterus is typically very soft, non-tender, it's relaxed, and that's going to become important because abruption is going to be the exact opposite of this. And then the fundal height may be just a little bit higher than expected, because if you think about it, it's the baby that's down in, or it's the placenta down in the cervical os and not the baby. And so therefore, um, the baby is actually pushed up a little bit higher. So that fundal height may be slightly higher than expected. 
As far as interventions go, of course, we always have two patients. Whenever it comes to the intrapartum or antepartum, intrapartum, and technically postpartum, although the infant has their own set of care, we have two patients. So we want to assess the maternal vital signs. Obviously, if there's bleeding, we always are concerned for hemorrhage or some sort of shock situation. Uh, we want to assess fetal heart rate and activity. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in the intrapartum video, but in all honesty, the heart rate and fetal activity really determines how well that baby is doing inside of the uterus. And when it comes down to whether or not this has to be an emergency delivery or it can proceed as normal, really depends on how well the baby or the fetus is tolerating this. An um, ultrasound is usually how previa is diagnosed. We want to avoid any vaginal exams or stimulation of the cervix because we don't want to induce labor. We do not want labor to happen. Uh, we place the woman in on bed rest, side lying, of course, assessing for bleeding. And again, like we talked about, those signs of shock we want to be alert to. Now, the other thing before we go to abruptio placenta, I mentioned it very briefly at the beginning of this, and that is the need for a cesarean section. So what's going to happen if we deliver the placenta first? The baby's going to think that it's already born, begins to breathe, and have hemorrhage issues of their own. So very important that a placenta previa becomes a cesarean section. Again, the partial previa may not, just depends on how much of the cervical os is exposed. But oftentimes they will just go ahead and do a cesarean section to prevent postpartum hemorrhage or um, some sort of harm to mother and baby. And so the last thing for this video is going to be abruptio placenta, also known as placental abruption, whichever one you want to choose is fine. And this is where the placenta just kind of prematurely separates from the uterus. And this is after the 20th week, but it's well before um, delivery. So body wasn't quite ready for this to happen, but it is pulled away from the uterine wall. Assessment, very opposite of previa, where previa was bright, painless bleeding. This is going to be dark, red vaginal bleeding, uterine pain, rigidity, tenderness, a very hard board-like abdomen, very rigid, severe abdominal pain that may travel into the back and into the pelvis. Uh, fetal distress 100%, right? Because the placenta has pulled away. So the baby thinks it's delivered. So fetal distress, maternal shock, you're going to see late decelerations or variable decelerations. And we'll talk about fetal heart rate um, in the intrapartum video if you haven't watched that already. And then interventions, of course, again, we're going to assess maternal vital signs, fetal heart rate, assess for bleeding and abdominal pain, maintain bed rest oxygen, IV fluids, watch for uterine activity because if the female goes into labor, this is gonna end up being a cesarean section more often than not. Um, but at least we have time when there's no uterine contractions. Um, however, if uterine contractions begin, this is gonna turn into an emergent situation, prepare for delivery. And then we have to monitor for something called disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC for short. And that just happens to be where the body uh, coagulates to the point, clots blood to the point where it runs out of platelets. And when it runs out of platelets, the opposite happens and they start to bleed. So it's a very critical condition in where the mother not only is clotting, but she's also hemorrhaging at the same time. And so that is it for this video and I will see you in the next one. Make sure you uh, like, comment and share if you found it helpful. See you later.